Electricity is essential to our modern day lives. But most electricity is made by burning fossil fuels like coal and natural gas, which damage the environment and can be bad for your health. We're not sure how bad it'll be if we keep burning fossil fuels, but we really don't want to find out. So, are there better options? Well, one option is solar energy. Scientists around the world are working on making solar cell technologies cheaper and more efficient. By combining many solar cells into a solar panel, we can make a cheap, portable, clean, and accessible energy source for people everywhere. But what exactly are solar cells? And how do they work? Han Solar here is curious too. So he came to visit some of the labs at MIT to learn a bit more about solar cells. Is this a solar panel? What does it even do? Solar cells turn sunlight directly into electricity. Here's an array of solar panels, like one you might see on a rooftop. Each panel is made of several different layers, but the solar cells in the middle are the most important piece of the puzzle. If we zoom in a bit more, we can see that each solar cell is made of light-absorbing materials sandwiched between two conductive electrodes. When light is absorbed in the middle layers, it gives its energy to electric charges that can flow out of the electrodes as electricity. Most modern solar cells use silicon as their primary material. Silicon is abundant and durable, but it doesn't absorb light very well, so we need to use a lot of it. Researchers are working on alternative technologies that use much less material and could be much cheaper and lighter than silicon cells. These new technologies are known as thin film solar cells. Thin film cells are typically built from top to bottom. We start with a glass sheet and layer materials on top, one at a time, and then in the end, flip it all over to expose it to the sun. All right, let's do this. Here's Han next to the top surface of our glass sheet. Han, what are you doing? Oh no, you've made the glass dirty. I'm sorry. Now we have to clean it with an oxygen plasma. Here we're using a microwave to energize oxygen molecules and create a plasma, which breaks molecular bonds and destroys carbon-based contaminants on the glass surface. Okay, Han. So now that our glass is clean, let's add our first electrode layer. Although it may look white to you, this layer has to be transparent so light can pass through it. Here we'll use a transparent conducting material called indium tin oxide, or ITO, using a technique known as sputtering. We put our glass sheet into a vacuum chamber and spin it around to get an even layer. Cool. Then we create a plasma using an oscillating electric field. The energetic plasma knocks off tiny particles from a chunk of the material we want to deposit. Those particles land on our glass tile and build up a smooth film. Let's see what that looks like. Now that we have our transparent electrode, we'll deposit several more layers, starting with a thin buffer layer, which appears here next to Han. One of the most common ways of making these films is thermal evaporation. We start with our solar cell, which would be spinning here at the top of the chamber. Now we heat up the material until it turns into a vapor, which then condenses as a thin film on the solar cell, the same way that steam condenses on top of a cooking pot lid. Here we have some examples of different materials being evaporated. As their containers heat up and start to glow, individual particles of the materials held inside vaporize and land on our solar cell. Let's get back to our thin film solar cell. Here's Han beside our next layer, which is shown here in purple. Is it actually purple? This layer doesn't have to be purple. Scientists are working hard to find new materials that can improve how energy is converted from light into electricity. Carbon-based or organic molecules are one important type of material. We already use organics in all kinds of products, from drugs to food additives, to shampoos. Here's an example of a simple carbon-based molecule. Carbon atoms are labeled with a C 
and are all linked together. Scientists like to simplify these pictures by leaving out the carbon labels. But this molecule, just like penicillin and a lot of other organic molecules we're familiar with, wouldn't make a very efficient solar cell. Good solar cell materials need to be able to absorb light and move electrons efficiently. The carbon-based molecules used in organic solar cells are more like the dye molecules in a black t-shirt. As you might have learned on a sunny day, dark dyes are great at absorbing sunlight. Scientists are developing molecules that have a property called conjugation. Carbon atoms are linked together in an alternating pattern of single and double bonds. When these molecules absorb light, the excited electrons in the double bonds can move freely along the molecular backbone and create current. My shampoo sure can't do that. While this purple layer is very good at absorbing sunlight, the next black layer is important for moving electrons out of the solar cell. This layer is made of buckyballs, or C60 as they're known in the chemistry world. Finally, we add a white buffer layer and our metal electrode, which is usually made of silver, gold, or aluminum, also by thermal evaporation. But wait, Han, this isn't the only thin film solar cell technology out there. Really? Scientists are working on all kinds of new materials. So what you have there is a small molecule organic solar cell. Wow. Can you help me zap up a few other ones, Han? Sure, I got this. We can make a solar cell out of long chains of organic molecules known as polymers, or tiny nanocrystals called quantum dots, or even hybrid semiconductors with organic and inorganic components. These materials are especially cool because they can be dissolved in a solution just like ink, so eventually we might be able to print them on flexible plastic sheets, the same way newspapers are printed on paper. Crazy! Printable solar cells. Imagine that, Han! We can also use semiconductors like cadmium telluride, or cad tau, or a blend of copper, indium, gallium, and selenium, known as SIGs. Look how thick that layer of cad tau is, Han. Can you believe they call that a thin film solar cell? Oh my goodness, that's huge! Alright, let me jump on here and invite some friends to check these out. Here we go! Oh no, here comes silicon! Run, Han, run! I found that silicon solar cell from the beginning. Hmm, I guess silicon's not so scary after all. Look at it compared to a penny. So if silicon is this thin, those thin films we put together must be really, really thin. I bet they would be super flexible and lightweight. Okay, hon, time to test our solar cell. Let's flip that big guy over and put it under the sun. Solar cells are a clean, renewable source of energy that could help us avoid dangerous climate change. The allied thin film solar cells and their sworn enemy of silicon each have unique advantages and all are sure to play a role in our world's energy future. But don't forget that solar and other renewable energy technologies can't save the world alone. We also need changes in international policy and energy efficiency to lead the way toward a truly sustainable global future. Turn that camera off.